All right, so here we have two individuals who want to play on the teeter-totter. Um, so in order to play most effectively, they should balance each other out on the thing, or it won't be that fun, right? Here's, here's a picture of it not working out. So what we want to do is we want to move the fat guy here uh, to a different position such that the teeter-totter will balance, right? So this is just sort of a picture of the problem. Well, let's draw what we want to happen. Okay. So, we'll say that this one is mass M. And this guy is mass, oh, what, 3m, something like that. And we'll say that the whole teeter-totter is length L, like so. Okay, our goal is to find how far in this guy has to go from the edge. Shall I call this x? We're looking for that in order for them to balance each other out. All right, so this is a torque problem, right? And let me move that a little bit, actually. I'll just kind of label it like that. Okay, it's a torque problem. So what we want is a free body diagram. And I'll just go with this picture as a free body diagram, I suppose. We have a force here of 3m times g, right? The force of gravity, his mass is 3m times g, makes his force of gravity. And here we have a force of just m times g. Okay, now since this is a torque-free body diagram, I need to identify my pivot point. Now, mathematically, we can actually pick any point we want as the pivot point, um, but usually if there's an obvious pivot point, go with that. So I'm gonna say that this is my pivot point. Um, now sometimes, sometimes it, get, it can get tricky, but in this case it is the clear choice that it will be my pivot point. And I need to define what I'm going to call a positive direction of rotation. So I'll go with the trigonometric convention that if this bar rotates counterclockwise, that is a positive direction. So my free body diagram is looking pretty good. Um, after a free body diagram, well, if it's a force free body diagram, we would write F equals MA, but since it's a torque free body diagram, we write torque, sum of the torques, equals I alpha. Um, but since we don't want this thing to rotate, more importantly, the sum of the torques should equal zero. Okay, it should balance out. So that is going to be, well, the torque due to fatso here will cause this thing to rotate in the positive direction. Can you see that? If you were to push down on this side of the teeter-totter, it would rotate as my positive arrow is indicating. It would rotate in that direction. So that means he is causing positive torque. So I'll say uh, that that goes in as positive torque due to, um, I'll put a three for the three M. Okay, and over here, will the torque due to the little guy well, if you push down on that side of the teeter-totter, all else ignored, it would cause it to rotate in the negative direction, right? Not in the direction of the positive rotation here, but the opposite or negative direction. So I have to say minus the torque due to, and I'll put a one because his mass is one M, I don't know. Okay, now um, this is just sort of a step to help us decide which is positive and which is negative. But what we need to remember is that the definition of torque is force times the distance, um, go with R, I guess, times the cosine, times the sine of the angle between them. Okay, so the torque due to F for this example would be F times the distance to the pivot point times the sine of the angle between them. So looking at my picture, well, this guy's all the way at the end this is his distance, and it's L over 2, right? It's half the teeter-totter, if you know how teeter-totters are built generally. 
um, then it'll then the distance to from him to the pivot point is L over 2. And the angle between his force, the gravity, and that distance is 90 degrees. See that? Okay. Now he now this guy also has 90 degrees. Okay. Um, but his distance, well, we don't know it exactly. Oops. We don't know this distance exactly, but we can call it what it is, which is L over 2 minus X. Can you see that? The whole distance to the end, to his end would be L over 2, but we're taking X off from that. All right. So, torque 3 is going to be the force, which is... 3mg, I'll just use parentheses to make it clearer, times the distance, which is L over 2 minus x, times the sine of the angle between them. Which is 90 degrees. Now that's going to be minus torque due to the little guy, which is mg times his distance to his to the pivot point times the sine of the angle between the distance to the pivot point and the force, which is, oops, 90, as I mentioned. Now, the sine of 90 is 1, so that's nice. And I can uh, get rid of some of these unnecessary parentheses, and I get So our goal is to solve for x, right? So uh, we know the, well, we don't know the m's exactly, but there is an m everywhere, right? Well, let me add this uh, term to the other side first. Let's look at it this way. So I can divide both sides by mg. that. Okay, and so now I've got this. Put, bring in the 3. Um, and I should be able to skip more steps than this, but my brain is failing. So let's see if I'll add the x over and subtract the l over 2 to the other side. Okay, so 3l over 2 minus l over 2 makes 2l over 2, or l. And so, if I divide over the 3, I get that x should be 1 third of l. And so that 3 is in there, which has something to do with the fact that he had 3 times the mass as the other guy, but who knows if we could have guessed that. Physics did it for us, the math. So, in order for them to balance each other out, this guy has to move in by a third of the entire length. Alright.